Herndon House. Where Booth meets with his conspirators. What conspirators? Get back! Get back! Can I shoot? You run! Stay low! Don't stop for anything! Wait, what about you? I'm right behind you. Go! Go! Abigail Spencer was here last week and she warned me about you guys. Uh, who's that? Oops. Yeah, so that's what she said <laughs> you. It's exactly what she said. How are you doing? What's up? I love this audience. I think they love you right back. They're pretty good. So talk to me about the show. How did each of you come to do it? <laughs> so I'm at. <laughs> good answer, good answer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, it was, uh, I went, uh, had a meeting with... Uh, Sean Ryan, and um, read for the part. And as soon as I, as soon as I read the script, I should I should preface that as soon as I read the script, I loved it. It reminded me of early Spielberg. It reminded me of Indiana Jones. Reminded me of Han Solo, my character particularly. So, I mean, I was on board from the get go, and and um, you know I got the call that they were into me as well for the part. So that's how it happened for me. Yeah. <laughs> I was up for something else, and I read the script. And it was one of those things where I had to decide between which one to do. And I thought to myself, if I don't go in for this, whether I get it or not, if I don't go in for this, I'm going to kill myself. And if, if, stuff, if someone else gets it, I'm going to have to take them down. Wow, that's, so, like, that's a big thing to put on NBC. It is, it is. And uh, I think for everyone's benefit, uh, I got the role. And uh, I think it was probably for the well, best. And not only that, but you have some of the best lines on the show. I do. I have the best lines on the show. <laughs> um, Anything else you blackmailed out of them? I, uh, no, that's the best I could get. We got, yeah, that's pretty it. What about you? Mr. Um, time Traveling Terrorist? Yeah. The Time yeah. Bandit. The, the time, time Bandit. bandit. <laughs> Thank you. Let's do it together. The Time, time Bandit. bandit. Yeah. Um, you have to have a deep voice for that. Um, I, I, I read the script and uh, I had a meeting with Sean and Eric. And during the meeting, I was thinking, okay, I've seen The Shield, I've seen The Supernatural, and they're talking and talking and talking. And I'm just thinking, how would look the mixture of the shield and the supernatural how would that show look like i really want to do this and uh we're now in episode eight already and it's exactly what they've been talking about uh what i'm going to be doing and all that stuff it really makes it extremely interesting and i'm like malcolm i'm really happy to be here that i you know didn't but not like else. me no, 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 I'm not happy. <laughs> Matt is no, extremely happy. unhappy to be here. <laughs> you didn't say you were happy. You said, you know, you went for it. You know, Malcolm you said, I'm really happy. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, all right. Are you happy? I'm so happy. <laughs> well, the, tonight's episode, I think, is so timely because it deals with the party of Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And given that we're, you know, the election is not making news or anything, um, uh, not at all. Uh, we got an election? I, 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 the first I'm hearing of it right now. How, how do you guys come up with the episodes? Do the writers come up with the ideas and then turn to you and say, uh, uh, turn to you for input? Uh, we all write the episodes together, the three of us. Um, and then we, we run we it by Sean shower? and Eric. Uh, the three of us are in the shower writing it's episodes. Just once or twice. It's <laughs> only on the weekends. Um, no, they, we, have a, we have a writer's team, and, and it's well thought out, and these guys plan it well ahead. You know, there's, there's a lot of uh, mysteries and secrets that we all have as characters and as actors about each other and a story. And, um, and then so we, we see it, and we learn a lot of things kind of in real time at the same time time you know we there's always something new happening every episode and we kind of look at each episode and go wow I can't believe that happened and so um, you know the, we have a great group of writers each one has visited for for each uh, episode and it's been really informative and different and it's uh, it's fun to see every new surprise in every episode yeah I mean when we get there on the day and we're, we're doing a scene if things aren't working or there's little things that we could possibly adjust whether it be a word or maybe a, a whole line or just you know, they're also really flexible with us in that they, they take input, you know, day of as well. It's just a big collaborative effort, but it's certainly on the page there for us before we even get there. Well, the first episode dealt with the Hindenburg, and the, de the, the attention that's paid to detail is pretty staggering, especially for, sh for a show. I mean, it's like a little, each, each episode's like a little mini movie. Mm -hmm. So what is it like shooting these mini movies? 
Um, what I love about it is, uh, like you said, it's the attention to detail, but we're, we're not trying to uh, compare our TV show with a feature film. We can't, you know, we can't go there. But the things we do are really thought through, and we take a real historical event that it's relatively big, and then we find bits and pieces that are real deal from the history, but people don't know about it. Like, I, I knew about the Lincoln assassination, but I didn't know that in the same time they wanted to kill uh, General Grant and the Vice President. That was like unknown for me. So every episode you're going to find out something from the history that it's less known fact from the history. I like that concept a lot. What time period has been the most enjoyable for each of you to visit? I like the Alamo because I get to dress... Uh, a bit like a cowboy and hold an old gun and yeah, he looks cool. I look really cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we did. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually love the Alamo as well, but we did a, a World War II Nazi Germany episode where um, I was doing a little German, speaking German, and we had some pretty cool wardrobe and stuff. That was a fun one. He gets to, he gets to do all the cool kickassery stuff. I yeah, I do. I get the I get to kick your ass a lot. Yeah, yeah. He does. <laughs> What about you, Gorn? Um, the Alamo, I have to say, because the, the further back in the history you go, uh, I mean, I personally would love to see how the pyramids were built, but obviously that's nothing to do with our today. You know, if you change something then, the repercussion in today's day and age would be catastrophic. You know, you just can't do that. But still, further away to the past we go, I kind of enjoy myself the most. So the Alamo, I have to say, was uh, kind of the most favorite. I don't know, maybe some kind of crazy romanticism and different time, no sewer, no running water. <laughs> so romantic. <laughs> so awesome. What historical figure would each of you want to have a drink with? Uh, I'd go with Jack Johnson, because uh, he was sort of like the Muhammad Ali the, the, of his time, the Mike Tyson of his time, and just his insane sensibility, the, the audacity of, of him. For those that don't know, he was this boxer, and he would just like, you know, I think in the 30s or something like that, I want to say, and I think he would keep like tigers and shit and like <laughs> date white women. Like, it was just like, it's like, you are bold, sir. <laughs> you are, you're bold. Man, I don't know, it's a, it's a tough question. I, is it possibly cliche to say Jesus? And yes, you could have wine with Jesus. Of course you can. So, you know, but the, pro the problem in talking to Jesus, well, he's always talking in parables, right? So you'd be like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> and then like, maybe you'd figure it out later. You totally but, couldn't even tweet what he said because it would never be 140 characters, ever, <laughs> ever. True, it will all be red letters though. Yeah. So I, yeah, I don't, I don't Jesus know. is long-winded. <laughs> it's, it's too much for Twitter. That'd be now, pretty On the plus cool. side, you would only have to bring water with you. Okay, Jesus jokes have gone and far he could, enough. I see oh, you did. And back it to turns Gorn. water to wine. <laughs> uh, you know, little, little, little known fact about Jesus, he turned water into wine. No one, no one knows that. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's so, such an unlimited resources for, for this TV show and where we can go. You know, I mean, you can say, you know, I, I was always wondering, is Noah's Ark story literal? and how he built this ship, and I really wanted to be there. And kind of like, uh, you know, is that, is that gonna hold the water and stuff? You know, I mean, <laughs> seriously, there's so many things. You know, how the pyramids are built, you know, Aztecs, Mayas, all these things that are before the written history, I would love to see. But unfortunately, I don't know how much merit that we have that in our show. Maybe season three? Four. Eight. Thank you. Twelve. Whoa! <laughs> that's that's how easy it is to get a show renewed. You just you just say Saying the amount of live, episodes you'd on like. On a live broadcast, it'll, <laughs> it'll just manifest itself. Am I right? Yeah. Were you guys big history nerds going in? No. I, I I liked history growing up. That was definitely one of my more favorite subjects in school. I was a math and science guy. Really? And you became an actor. Yeah. How'd that happen? I don't know. <laughs> That's not one you hear very often. I don't know. I was uh, I was a math and science kid. I went to Stuyvesant. I'm, I'm from New York. I'm from Brooklyn. We're in New York right now. Is that for Brooklyn or what is that for? Is that for Stuyvesant? What is that for? What is that for? For Brooklyn. All right, all right, all right. Get him, get him. Uh, so I was like a math and science high school kid, but the, the, the benefit of going to that school is that we had uh, big theater programs. And so junior and senior year, I used to do plays. So it was heavily between me doing biology and doing theater. And then uh, theater was much easier. 
so like by the time school came and college came, I wound up uh, just going to theater, going to acting, going to NYU, and and uh, took it from there, I guess. So now okay. I just play guys that are smart. That way I don't have to really learn or study. And what about you, a big history um, buff? Yeah, actually, yeah, my backup plan, if I never, in my country, it was the uh, Academy of Dramatic Arts. That was the only way to become a professional actor. And my backup plan, if I never ended up there, because the audition is kind of tricky to get in, I would be a teacher of history and geography in my hometown. And it's an old tradition of amateur theater, so I would continue working as an actor, but as an amateur in the theater. So that was the plan. Now I'm here, I guess. So. Is there a particular part of history that fascinates you? Uh, my hometown is uh, about 900 years old, and uh, the main structures were built and pretty much intact, like a cathedral and uh, the old part of town from about five, 600 years ago. And you know, I, I grew up there, walked those streets every day, and I was thinking it'll be really cool to go back there and just see the same buildings, just without satellite dishes, electricity, wires, no sewer, no running water, we already established that. Uh, but to see the people, how they lived then, and you know, without telephones, without like you know, social media and everything, it'd be really cool. You know? well, I wonder, you can strong arm the writers into doing that, right? Well, maybe we can shoot an episode in Croatia. Eh? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Tons of history there. You guys have such a camaraderie. I mean, obviously backstage, you totally yeah. no, no it's eye contact. The, it's just for the cameras. It's just for the cameras. It's it's just for the cameras. But it really is integral to the show, even though you play the villain. You guys have a really good connection. Did that happen immediately? You know, I think they, they kind of... No, wait, see, what? No, it's our chemistry. Wait, wait, our, our I chemi the... No, we have good chemistry. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, they, they, you know, they, me and Malcolm and Abby, we formed this team of, of people who have never met each other, never seen each other, never worked with each other. And honestly, it's kind of appropriate. We all laugh about it now, but neither one of us three have ever seen anything that we've done before. <laughs> So we're like, wait, what have you been on? I've never seen you before. Mal Malcolm's like, I've never seen 90210. <laughs> you know, and Abby, I'm like, I, I didn't watch Mad Men, so I don't know. So it's kind of fun. But, VR? Uh, What's that? I never, yeah. I, so, uh, but, it's, <laughs> but it's been fun. I mean, we've, I think it's great. We're, we're learning about each other as, as people, you know, off camera, and, and uh, it's a blast. We have a good time, and, yeah. and I think it translates on camera as well. You know, we're kind of building that chemistry on camera at the same time we're building chemistry off camera. So it's, it's nice. And it's great. I think because of that, we, we really didn't have any preconceived notions about each other. Do you know what I mean? We're kind of learning each other. And, you know, much like the characters, we're thrown into these um, uh, situations out of nowhere. You know, the three of us are sort of we're, we're in Canada and we're on a new set and new week. So we kind of really do have to depend on each other to figure out what's happening. Like before every scene, we're like, okay, what year is this? <laughs> like, what are we, who are we fighting and what do we have to do? And like, we have to have this sort of collective memory together. And so it's, it really is integral for us to kind of have each other's backs. Goran, do you have to completely separate yourself from them on set? Not speak to them, uh, hang out no, with them? No, no, but uh, the scripts are structured that way that we don't see each other so much on the set. Now, we, 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 we have fun here. Like yesterday, I actually spent some really awesome time with Malcolm's family and his friends from high school. I heard really? a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> And, but on set, you know, they're like in their uh, 60s costumes or something, and I jumped inside their time machine in my, like, uh, the Alamo outfit, you know, with my flint guns. They're like, hey, guys, what's up? And they're like, whoa, what are you filming? I'm like, we I'm already on the Alamo episode. They're like, what, you started already? What? Yeah. So it's, it's a little bit confusing. It's a, it's a big production, so we've got, uh, we often don't make our days. So we've got a lot of, a lot of uh, second unit days and second units where you're, you're actually running, like, two sets of cameras and so we're kind of jumping back and forth between costumes what Malcolm said you know one scene to the next we might be in the 60s and then we jump back to the Alamo scenes and we're in full different costumes so but we don't get to see him but yeah he, he popped in our time machine the other day when we're about to roll on a take and he comes in there like <laughs> And Goran's like nine feet tall, so having this guy come into the midst of this time machine this My tiny machine is bigger fear. than yours. I know <laughs> your machine is much bigger. That's true. But it's how you use it. It really is. I'm sorry. It's not how big it is. How you use it. What time you have a better pilot. <laughs> what time period has been the most challenging for you guys to film in? Well, I would say the Alamo was challenging. We, damn we, Alamo. Damn yeah, Alamo, yeah. man. Listen, it was, it it was, was tough. But it, it was big, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. Um, <laughs> 
It's uh, going to be a good episode. <laughs> Do not uh, it, it was challenging. Um, but you know what? I think you might agree with me on this one. The, the Civil War one that we're going to see tonight was challenging for us only because it was still like 90 degrees in Vancouver when we shot that. And uh, our stages do not have air conditioning, so it's not all glitz and glamour. Uh, but we were in these, you know, wool uh, Civil War Union soldier uniforms, yeah. and they were hot. hot. <laughs> it's, it's intensely hot. That one was hard, and I think, believe it or not, Vegas was, was very hard, because that was a lot of late night, night uh, shooting, running around. Oh, I can't. I always have to worry about spoiler alerts. Yeah, I never yeah. did. I spoil any? No. <laughs> All right. Good. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. But that was. Uh, there's some late nights in Vegas. There's some. There's some action. It's action packed. Our well, show's action packed. Not unlike the real Vegas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And now to our audience, please. Oh, do we do that? Will you get that? Uh, Is that a section of the thing? Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> do you work here? What is? It? Who are <laughs> What's you? What's up, players? Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet y'all. So, happening? you're bringing the fire, I love it. <laughs> now, we're talking about people drinking and going back in time. I'm curious. Now, if you guys could pick a specific event that you could possibly alter, what would you pick? Open to all three of you. I don't know if I'd alter anything. It's too scary. I mean, like, I feel like you always sort of think, as bad as things have been and still are and events that have happened, if you like you always kind of bit of, you feel like a grass is greener situation and oftentimes it's not, you know, so I think it's, it'd be really scary to change things. I was thinking about some things in my life in the past that I would like to change and I'm, you know, it's a, like a thought experiment. You go back, you change them and then I realize so many great things that happened afterwards would need it to be changed as a result of that. It would just be a chain reaction and I, I, I wouldn't do anything. I really just let it be, just uh, learn from the mistakes. And if you would be able to be an observer and 100% sure that you're not, you're not able to affect, but you can watch what was going on, like you know, a couple of things in history that I would really like to see, that would be amazing. You know? I, uh, I pissed myself in kindergarten. I would like to go back. <laughs> And not do that. Tell yourself what. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> don't do it. Use the bathroom. <laughs> now. It would be Man, that. oh man. That is great. But then you might have not become an actor. I wouldn't have been well, who I am today. You wouldn't have been able to tell that story just now either. I, so, I, see, I needed it's cataclysmic. that. cataclysmic. Is... <laughs> I needed that anecdote. You weren't potty training kindergarten? I was potty training. You know what it was? I was such a response. My teacher was like, y'all can't go up. Don't leave because she had to leave the room. And I didn't leave the room because I was such a, I, a, a listener. that I was uh, such a conformist oh. that I was like, oh. And then I peed. And then the teacher came back and she was like, why don't I just go to the bathroom? What's wrong with you? Like, it's like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I don't know. So now I never listen to authority. Good spin on that, though. Very well done. Next question, please. Hey guys, uh, I actually got to see all of you at a Comic Con last weekend. Oh, cool. Um, so, were, were you, what were you guys expecting when you guys uh, got into the show? Like, did you expect like how the um, the audience reaction was going to be? Yeah, I mean, I, th I, I think that we all have felt like we were doing something fun and special. And I, I think that once we saw the first episode, it was on paper, it was fun and special. When we were filming it, it was fun and special. And I think when we saw episode one, we thought it was fun and special. And, and I think we still do. I mean, tonight, tonight, this episode tonight, episode two, is probably, I like it more than the pilot. And people love the pilot. So um, I just think we're doing some really good stuff. And I feel like it's an adventure that the audience can ride along. The, the audience really is the fourth member of the time team, you know, with us. It's, it's, we're being put in this place and the audience is being put in this place with us and you guys can form your own opinions and, um, you know, about how you would react in that situation. I just think it's a super interactive uh, in that way uh, for audience. I think it's, you know, hopefully people will still love it. Yeah. Fun and special. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would watch the show if I'm not part of it and I see and I know who's behind it, and I've seen the previews and stuff, I would definitely give it a go. I, it, would be, it would be something that I would enjoy. Especially because it's a cool family show, which there are very few of. That isn't, and that isn't I don't know how I'm going to explain to my nine-year-old, what am I doing tonight? Yeah. You know, when you see the episode, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's very tricky. And, and last question over here, please. Hello, this question is for each of you. You're um, adorable. You're so sweet. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this question is for all of you over here. Um, now that you experience um, timeless and what can actually happen when you go back in time and change things, 
do you approach your lives differently now, now that you know the cause and effects to what you actually do on a daily basis? That's a great question. Hmm. Okay. Still reckless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Living it on the edge. Um, I don't know. I, I think I'm relatively thoughtful in general of my actions. I believe it. <laughs> Did you just laugh at no, me? No, 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 right no, 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 no. I saw it. Just <laughs> right here. He's laughing with you. Now, <laughs> Is that what's happening? Yeah, I mean, you're probably right. I'm reckless, too. <laughs> what about you, Gorn? No, honestly, it just provokes more questions like, you know, for example, tonight's episode, what I've been thinking about since we did it, you know, would you save Abraham Lincoln's life? And, you know, how many great changes would happen if you actually do that? But maybe, maybe somehow down the line, 70, 80 years uh, in the future, something happens that is going to be much worse than today's present is. You never know. So it's always the... thought experiment, you know, like, what would happen? Would you do that? How would you react on something like that, you know? So, I don't know what to tell you. I'm, I, I think I'm still, what, what Matt says, still the same, pretty much. Yeah, we're all just a reckless trio of, <laughs> of actors. <laughs> and when can we see Timeless? You can see it tonight at 10 p.m. Uh, on NBC every Monday after The Voice. Thank you so much, you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming out. <laughs>